it okay if we, if we use explicit language? Please do. Uh, all right. Welcome to Wine and Cheese number 24. We've made it there. Uh, happy tonight to have long-term good old buddy um, who just got back from travel in the world. Dave Rosser uh, is sitting down with us tonight. Uh, it was probably 15 years in before I knew your last name. Uh, affectionately known by me and friends as Davo. Um, how's it going, bud? Feeling fine. Man, you just, from what I can tell, um, and I'm sure we'll get into your background. By back- the smell. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into your background, but right now, I mean, you know, people would know that you're, you know, you play with Mark Broussard and a really well-known legendary group called the Afghan Wigs. <clears throat> I mean, you've made it, right? You've hit the big time. You are, you have FU money. You are, you're. Oh, uh, yeah. You're- Actually, I'm going to have to ask you guys to leave because I've bought this building <laughs> and uh, the dudes are coming in in the morning to move my shit in. I know, but so, that's, that's, that's funny it. though, you're right? Out. That is, is that the perception? Do you find that, that people think once yeah. you've made it to a certain point, they think. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I'm not playing with. You know, Justin Timberlake or somebody like that. That's that's when dudes start really rolling hard. And then, like, I'm taking six months off. and You know, go to Fiji or whatever. But So, Justin Timberlake, is that, would you, like, if you got the offer. You That'd could, be a great gig. Are you kidding? Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, if you're going to be a side person, you know, that'd be something where they probably hire you because you're capable of doing a bunch of different styles and reading and being, you know, real tight. It's funny because I've talked about you not before. Not a junkie. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, not a junkie. It seems like not a junkie is a pre- Being rep. not a junkie, like, well, there's still plenty of people that get a lot of work being junkies. But, you know, like if you're as a musician, if you do the stuff that you merely have to do to get through life in other jobs, you will be like, like, don't get drunk at work. Answer the phone when it rings and stuff like that. Show up on time, not three hours late. You will be head and shoulders above everybody else going for the same job. That's crazy, right? It's crazy. Man. I was hearing, I heard a, an interview on my favorite radio show, Jason Ellis, the other day with like two Hollywood big wigs, whatever, that were in the biggest, you know, they were in Iron Foot Man, whatever it is that mm-hmm. just came out. And they were both saying, they were like, Iron uh, Foot. Pretty much, <laughs> Iron Foot. Pretty much the only thing in Hollywood that is frowned upon is, don't pick. Don't take a picture of me doing coke at a party and put it out there. Everything else, <laughs> Iron Foot. You're, <laughs> you're pretty much good to go. In a world where the forest is disappearing, Bigfoot had one choice. <laughs> Iron Foot. Is this that, time it's personal. Is that the story of Bigfoot who needed a a foot replacement and they could only give it to him? It's an, an iron? android Bigfoot. Or is this okay? This is a completely different species. That oh, was dude, sent I'm writing down this here. down right now. <laughs> You'll make some yeah. money, man. Write that, write that down. We're the idea, man. But no, Dave, I've I've, <laughs> I've, so, I've even talked about you on the show before um, as being one of those people who you know you see him. This group you're with, the Afghan Wigs. I don't. They're obviously well known. They're they're like the oh, air yeah. quote legendary group, right? So yeah, they're, they're yeah, in yeah. the one percent. Wigs had videos on MTV, and you know, were in movies, and had had a lot of influence over a certain generation of people. You know, and beyond. And yet you got home, and what's the first thing you're doing? Is you're looking for some work, right? Eh, I'm looking for projects. I'm doing a solo album. Are you really? Working on that. I hope to have that done by the end of May. And yeah. then Greg's coming down in, coming down next month, and we're going to work on the record that we're working on now. Like the Dave Rosser no, 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 project? No, no, like, Well, I don't know what it's, I don't, I'll call it something. Don't call it that. No. The Dave Rosser Project, and I'm covering <laughs> all Alan Parsons Project songs in my own way. <laughs> Not. Yeah. Well, how did you get hooked up with these guys? These Afghan. Oh, gigs? Through Mike Napolitano was is the he's the hub who okay. I met through Bobby Herner when and I first moved here in ninety two, ninety three, whenever it was. And a lot. If, if anybody there, he knows who doesn't know, Dave Napolitano is a, a friend of the Mike. group. He's a. I'm sorry, yeah. Mike. Dave in front of me, Mike Napolitano. He's a music producer, right? Yeah. Pretty well known. Producer, engineer, Bon Vivant. So amiable zany. If you, <laughs> it, so you're looking for work. So if someone, what's that festival going on this weekend? Is French, French Quarter, Quarter Fest? Fest this weekend. So or next weekend? That, that's the type of things you want to do, right? Like oh, well, be a hired I'm gun to come and play. Uh, I would, um, if I'd had 
more forethought I would have put together a project to be doing already and stuff. But I was trying to think of stuff, you know, maybe some stuff to do locally that's satisfying, but I don't really where I don't have to worry about the money. You like do you, you like know? Taylor Swift? Huh? I like to play Taylor Swift. A little, a little project I like to call Taylor Swift. I mean, I may have. I'm just saying, I may have an opening if you want to play Taylor Swift covers. Oh, covers <laughs> Taylor Swift covers. <laughs> I mean, that's probably not not fun, but it would have to be real money. Saw the uh, saw the donuts out there today playing. <clears throat> you want to know something that's kind of weirding me out? Obviously, you know Bobby Herner. Bobby's kind of my co-host on this show. He's got a son named Dublin, right? Yeah. He's just on that stage every Dude, what is he going to turn into? Well, no, no, no. Here, let, before we jump to that, because that's what everybody says, right? Oh, what is this little boy going to turn into? He's so talented. From what I can see, he hasn't learned to do anything yet. How and he's a diva, past? man. I was How? backstage, and he was trashing the dressing room. Right? Because it was the wrong brand of water. Dude, how much of a pass is this little... Look, and I'm being serious. How much I'm of joking. a pass is this kid going to get? I think he's like 10. He's painting He's his probably face. seven, I think. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think it has to be... Here's the thing about Bobby Herner, though. He's, like, real. And he's, as much as he's, like, really funny uh -huh. and can be funny at the drop of a hat, he's got, he's got a real depth to him. So I got a feeling... I mean, they teach that kid a bunch of stuff really deliberately. In my mind, that's what I... Like, I mean, it's got to be weird if you're growing up basically not doing anything except putting on a show, but he hasn't, like, learned... You know right. how to play a guitar yet and stuff. They got, they but got, they got a guitar this, hung around his but shoulder. But he's learning this other stuff at the same time. That, I mean, there may be there may be lessons that you know he gets his feelings hurt and then learns a lesson later on when he realizes that those people don't actually know him that they're cheering for him. You know. Yeah. But at the same time, he's probably also learning some other stuff that, about street smarts and about people and mass manipulation who knows you know <laughs> i mean edwin edwards had to start somewhere you know what i mean yeah well oh man i'd vote governor. for the dude doing you know if and, i find if i had those childhood pictures of it and of course mostly i'm joking but it, it did for some reason i was sitting there and i was in the restroom and i was watching their video and i saw him and i was like man he's got a little guitar that's where i watch all my bag of donuts videos <laughs> <laughs> on the phone on the job i mean right like are you not gonna you know, that's, of it. that's a special time I have. I have squirreled away for there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I started every time I have somebody on the show, and I know we're going to talk for about an hour, I start hitting up uh, some people that we are friends with in common just to get some, you know, I call it dirt, even though I don't want any dirt. Everybody's like, I'm not got looking a story at, about me. Yeah, you know, just some funny stories. It's usually about me knocking some shit over. Well, it's funny you mention that because <laughs> I'm interested in this, and I actually cut uh, our mutual friend Dickie off. Um, from telling me the story, but he told me that there may have been a time where you ran yourself over with your own car. I did. <laughs> give us a little. Give us a little back. Give us a little backstory on that. If only there was some background music. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait! Is that my power soak? Is that the one with the fan on it? Yeah. Is that someone else's? That's yours. Oh wow! <laughs> I haven't seen it seriously since 1999. Really? Cool. Yeah. Wow, wicked. Does it work? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, so I, bring it, me back to that day. I was living in another city, really small college town, and the guy I worked with, we had a band, and we also rented out PA and stuff. I'm going to have to think about this before I speak, otherwise I'll ramble. And I know his time is valuable. No, please ramble. <laughs> this time ain't worth shit. <laughs> um, and he and a bunch of the other people were coming down here, actually, for either, either New Year's Eve or Mardi Gras. I, don't, I can't remember, but I remember I got stuck having to run sound, you know, like set up the PA, run the sound for like a frat party or some uh -huh. horrific thing where I'm sitting there hating it and everyone else is drunk and having fun and it's new year's eve or mardi gras or whatever and uh do the thing as i'm setting the pa up uh something falls on my ankle or i tripped over a snake or something got somehow i, I screwed up my ankle so now it's freezing cold it had rained party's over it's two o'clock in the morning what 
<laughs> and uh, so I go to tear this stuff down, and I start my car, and it won't start. And I and I knew there was sometimes it had a little trouble with the there's like an ignition module. When it's cold the car or doesn't start. Yeah. So you can what you do is you you turn the key on and then you open the hood, take a screwdriver, and there's these two little things you can touch together, and then the car will start right up. Right. Uh-huh. So I I had moved my car. I've got all the stuff torn down, but still not loaded. I had to you know go go back and put my car onto the trailer and all this stuff. So I'm parked on a hill, and facing down the hill and I get her in there. So the car won't start. I'm like, shit, I'm limping. It's already, it's freezing cold. I'm like, pop the hood, walk around, turn the key on, take the screwdriver, touch the two terminals together in the car. Vroom, starts right up and starts moving. And right then I realized there was nothing wrong with the ignition module. It was, I left it in drive because <laughs> it was an old car. So you turn it off and you could pull, pull the key out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and the thing's taken off with, you know, the driver door open and the hood up. And so in me, I limp around. I'm trying to get into the driver's seat. I get to the other side, get behind the door, get my hand on the steering wheel, and I get one foot inside the car. And now I'm hopping. And what happens? I slip, of course, and my foot goes under the brake. Now I'm being dragged. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm sure all this took place in like one and a half seconds, but yeah. it felt like a month. You know? yeah. I'm getting dragged, and we're heading straight for the curb. I could just imagine you know, my head popping off. I get my foot out. The thing runs over my other ankle. <laughs> like now both ankles trashed, and I, I'm just rolling around the street watching my truck helplessly, you know, careening towards. I went through a fence and hit a tree, narrowly nice. missing an oncoming car. Did you break any bones or anything? No, it was just too, like one was a really bad sprain. I've always you know? wanted to know what it's like to get run over by a car. Well, like just like you know what I'm saying. Like just stick your I hand. I got a screwdriver you can there. borrow if you want to find out. <laughs> So then you wrote it. So, so this happens. You run yourself over with your own car, which not a lot of people can say that. And then <laughs> it inspired you musically. Oh yeah, you know what I did after I got home when the swelling went down. <laughs> I wrote my magnum opus, which I'm about to perform for you right now. <laughs> no, you did. You wrote it a song goes something about it. like. <laughs> what do you? So, but you did. You wrote a song about it. Dickie told me you wrote a song about it. Oh, no. somebody, Is it for public consumption? George or something years ago recorded, recorded me relating the story, and he had... Spoken word piece. Yeah, oh, spoken, spoken word piece. piece. There was some music, but what was the music, George? I can't remember. Oh, Luke, it's from Luke, Luke. Summer Breeze? Was it, yeah. well, was it something I did, or was it something that was already existed? Because I can't remember. It was uh, by one of the magazine communal loops. Oh, Where right. Like everyone yeah. was working. Everybody could have that loop. That was a crazy scene. Well, that's interesting. I don't know. Maybe next time we have you on, <clears throat> by then we'll be doing a television show, and we'll have you, you know, I'm going to be doing anything to get viewers, so I'll have you run me over with your with your new car, <laughs> and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll do it. So you and I, we share a ton of the same mutual friends. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, uh, Squirrel, David, Bobby, uh, Dickie, all There's these too people. too many. I think of it as circles. Like right? Like, the donut circle, the Molly circle, the, then the, then within that the Metairie circle, yeah. Then that that overlays with a bunch of bunch of New Orleans people and downtown people and some musicians, some not. You know, you know, Squirrel. I don't know if we ever told you this because maybe we didn't want to hurt your feelings, but Squirrel and I used to have a joke that uh, Dave Rosser was the only man that we had ever met that was older than his own father. <laughs> Wow. I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, I just, he had gray hair back then, so and we were just evil fucks. He's the only man I've ever met <laughs> That's, older than my own father. Yeah, yeah. And we, it takes a minute for that to sink in <laughs> until you really realize what's going on. But really what I was getting to was... I'm old. You No, that has not, nothing to do with it. You, I, I've known you for a long time and had a lot of discussions with you, and you've never boasted or said anything about your ability to, as a musician. And yet all these people that I'm talking about they all say that you're you're the best. Do you ever do you ever think about that? No, I mean, what I just think about getting better. Because I guess we shared a mutual buddy, David, right? Yeah. Who I always said that you're my man. He's like shredded. I like to support my friends. You're the dude, and he's like, yeah, I'm good. He's like, but if you really want to go see the best person in our circles, maybe that we know, you, you go watch Davo. Oh, sweet. And I, I didn't really, I never really put it together until I tar- started watching you. And this is something that I ask all the musicians that I have on this show, because 
the background that I had, all I wanted to do was be the best, be number one. It's always working yeah, to man, be the best. Drive is the only thing that makes people be any good. It, what is it if it's not being the best? What is it that's that's in there trying to make you keep going? No, I just had a standard that that I that there's stuff I wanted to do, and to be able to do it, I had to figure out some stuff and how to understand some stuff. And to do that, then the first thing I had to do was teach my hands how to do it. But I had to learn how to hear it first. So you know? what is, this is something David used to tell me that I don't even know if this exists or if you have ever even thought about this, but he, would, he said this many times. Davo has perfect pitch. Davo has mm. perfect pitch. What is this perfect pitch? I don't have perfect pitch. I have good relative pitch. Perfect pitch would be somebody can go, and the guy go, oh, that's an E flat, only it's a few cents sharp or flat or something like that. That's identifying a note by hearing it without being able to have to walk over to the piano and figure out what so tone th- that is. So does it exist? Does, does anybody oh, really yeah, have sure. that? It's not that? It's not that hard. It can probably be taught. But having good relative pitch, like hearing if something's out of tune or if like you sing two notes, I can tell you the degree between them or be able to pick apart a chord and hear the voicings in the chord and sing the individual notes. There's a cool YouTube video of a guy who's teaching his son that little boy is you, fucking You've seen sick, it, right? and like he'll 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 play some some chord and go identify the tonic or whatever, and the kid's like blah blah blah, you know. Yeah, but that little kid, like I don't know the name of the video, and I don't even yeah, know why. But I you've was seen here. it, right? It wasn't just like the guy hit one note and he would. The guy was doing really dense stuff. Yeah. Like they say that the human brain can really hear about four voices at once with you know, and be able to pick them apart. I got that so beat. Sometimes you know when you hear that dense bebop shit or yeah. Debussy or whatever, like crazy chords and it's a it's a little overwhelming which is what's awesome about it it makes your brain go wow someone else doing all the work so i don't have to <laughs> where but, did you but that did, kid was yeah it's amazing yeah that little kid is not getting laid anytime soon i can oh, tell you man. that you know shit he's put probably, down he'll that be piano a DJ, pick up man. a guitar that's where all the ass is right davo <laughs> <Dave-O? laughs> i don't when, know ask the drummer <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because he sees everybody else getting laid where's uh where'd you get your start how old were you when you started Oh man, I started. I started. Uh, I had an older brother that's ten years older than me, and he was like in the Texas Boys Choir and involved in that kind of stuff. And we sang in church and stuff. And then so he was always around and he, and making a living like by age sixteen, only playing music. It's the only thing he's ever done, and he still plays to this day up in North Alabama. Um, but there was always a bunch of stuff laying around the house, pianos, guitars, and everything, and you gravitate towards it. At age six, my mother thought it would be a good idea for me to take some piano lessons for a minute, which I did. They weren't teaching me how to play any songs. You're having to play all these exercises. So I, you know, I did that for a season, and then pfft, forget it. But it taught me about reading music, and then later on, like when I was preteen, right around there, I decided I wanted to play trumpet because it, it looked cool. Trumpet, right? Yeah. That, so I already knew about reading and understood the concepts of reading music. So and trumpet, you can only play one note at a time, so you don't have to think about chords. <laughs> so that was pretty, you know, easy enough to learn how to do it, not to be good at it, but to learn how. So you can. can and you, then by the time I was fifteen, it was like, oh shit, I got to play guitar because that's what you do, you know. <laughs> yeah, because that, <laughs> right, that's what you do. But you're like, never going to get that juicy Dio gig unless you learn how to play guitar. So. <laughs> and that's what was hit back then. Or start your own thing. Or like was it Jethro Tull? Right. You ever thought about that? Standing <laughs> oh, on one yeah. foot and playing trump trumpet. Dude, you, that people love that guy. <laughs> I, hey, I'm a big I'm a big Jethro Tull fan. So I mean, at least there's one of us in the in this room. Do you? Yeah. They won a Grammy. That dude was badass. They won a man. Grammy that year. It was so, like six, seven years ago. Do you still play Stump Davo? Oh man, I mean, it's been a while. So let me let me catch everybody up. I, this this was actually the first night that I met you. I was probably 18, 19 years old, something like that, and you were in a band called Metal Rose. Yeah, with a lot of Panama the, City. That's Pan- what I think of. With a lot about. of the n- usual sub- suspects that you and I have talked about. Actually, <laughs> next week, I'm having uh, Jerry Donut, Kevin George, and Jonathan all in here at the same time to Dude, talk to them. Nobody, nobody left because why, why do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it was probably the first night I met you, and of course I was 18, 19 years old. I was underneath my buddy uh, David and Squirrel's wing, and I was just going up there to party, <clears throat> try to get some ass or whatever. And all of a sudden, I'm like, "Wow, I met all these cool people!" And then and we you go got back, some ass. yeah, and we go back to the band house, and there's probably 20 people in the room. And I mean, 
you know, everybody's doing whatever they want to do, and it's loud. And all of a sudden, David lot of it. kind of taps me. He's like, shh, shh. I'm like, oh, what's going on, bro? Like, you know, being quiet was not our thing, you know? I'm like, why are we being quiet? He's like, we're about to play Stump Devo. And I'm like, what the fuck is, you know, I'm, I'm just an asshole, you know? I'm like, the fuck are we, what are you talking about? We're doing drugs. There's chicks here. You're going to tie him to a stump? Yeah. You're whip him? And, <laughs> and basically, him. the game was, is you just sat there in the middle of the room with your acoustic guitar and just randomly, any song, any theme song, anything ever, someone could just throw it out there. And fucking amazingly, you were able to play it. <laughs> where, where did, how did, how did that game start? How, like, how does that work? How probably you... started, it probably all started at like rehearsals or when, when Metal Rose was always learning new songs. We'd kick out all kinds of stuff. Everybody would like bring two or three songs that they've always wanted to do or something. And I would never have anything because I just, I mean, I grew up with a brother whose job it was, was to learn popular music, right? So every, month from age five on he was bringing like he would get those copies of american top 40 they came on vinyl from the radio station yeah and the guys would give let him take them home so instead of just listening to i was always listening to music that he was into like he was turning me on to you know zeppelin and hendrix and all the old 60s stuff and the blues rock stuff and you know, Muddy Waters and Allman Brothers and all that. You know, the shit that everybody grew up with that listens to classic rock that we're all burnt on now. <laughs> but but he'd have those American Top 40 records. And so those were the records that were in my house. So I just listened to them over and over. So I had, I knew how, once I learned how to hear something and then just figure out what the chords were, because I, I have good relative pitch. <laughs> <laughs> see? See, I, see what I did? Um, then I could kind of... You know, I guess because of him, I developed like a good memory for yeah. learning songs off the cuff or being able to figure them out in my head. Oh, and it's weird though. Know. This was, but I also, I mean, nobody down there was really trying to. There were nobody was. Hey, do you know that song by Guided by Voices? Like, <laughs> no, you know. Everybody's like, dude, you know Boston? Well, like, yeah, everybody knows that shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Well, that was you, and I well, it doesn't you? I know you will not remember this, but that night was actually the first time you and I met and ever had any type of exchange because I was sitting there. I'm pretty sure I was on acid at the time, so it was hard for me to fucking mm -hmm. sit there, right? But David was telling me to be quiet, so I was like, "All right, be quiet." Those days were and insane. I, man. Oh man, and I'm like, you know what? I want to fucking, I want to see something that Dave. I don't know this Dave O from fucking Cornholio. I'm gonna fucking. And I was like. Play the fucking Stormtrooper march from Star Wars. <laughs> and uh, I remember you said something like, who the fuck is this kid? You know, like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, you hear, blang, blank, blank, blank. Blang, 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 blah, blang, blang, blah, blang. <laughs> and that shit is in there and in my brain. That's so weird, man. Forever. It's funny hearing other people's, other people relating memories of places where you both were. Yeah. But they were on the other side of the room. Well, and, and this was, well, and this is what it. I, what I, when I think back on it now, I don't forget anything, Dave. I really don't. I have a, I, I have a really good memory and I remember who was in that room that night and what I, when Let's I Let's name them all now. Well. And, and embarrass them. Yeah. Well, you know, you know who it was, but yeah. looking back on it, reflecting, what it made me realize was we were in this room of all these mega talented people in my eyes. Yeah. But yet they all wanted to listen to you play the guitar. <laughs> what do you what do you think about like that? Like, it just means I, I brought something different to the equation. Is that what you think to it the is? Equation. <laughs> to the motherfucking equation. The motherfucking equation. You were equation. trying to help us get all of the pissy. <laughs> <laughs> brought something different to the equation. Yeah. You know? So But I always felt really loved by all those people. I moved down here and because of the Metal Rose crew, you know, who are now in all these other successful bands around here. Yeah. I had, like, an instant circle of friends that were willing to accept me and all my, like, weird quirks. And so I didn't even know how weird I was. And looking back on it now, I'm like, oh, my God. I said what? You know? <laughs> this so, is, like, OCD and, and reckless and messy at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> OCD like, oh, and reckless and messy. Terrible combination of, I must have been aggravating as hell. Well, I, 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 that was a, such a bumpkin. I didn't know anything, man. Because you, you were from like the sticks of Alabama, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. 
That's well. There's nothing wrong with that. And my I, band was considered the Sticks of Alabama. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we were. Oh, that's look. Write that down too. We were the. We're, I'll write that down from under the Sticks of Alabama. That, that one's comes going right the after the Sticks of Alabama. Or, or, I'll tell him. <laughs> earlier on, we were talking. We were talking, and somebody came up with. I, I write down stuff every time I hear anything cool or a cool catchphrase or a funny name that would be. A, there'd be a good name for my my alter my alter ego as a country singer, AC Ductwork. <laughs> <laughs> I want to write the, Look, the sticks of Alabama. <laughs> Actually, yeah, <laughs> the sticks. We are the sticks. It's like the of eagles Alabama. of death metal. The yep. sticks of Alabama. What the fuck would that sound like, man? I don't know. Probably something I am that was the relative- modern man. <laughs> Probably something. Kill Roy. <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> relatively in key, I would assume. <laughs> uh, so I started digging around on you, you know, because now on the internet I can go find out pretty much whatever I want about Dude. you. And man, there's some interesting shit about you. Anybody who, um, you know, knows Dave O, Dave Rosser, you've also got your own little page that's that's Dave Rosser on guitar, right? Yeah, I guess I had that's to do where something. if you want people to go find out about you or um, I was just playing shows, I posted up there or if one of my friends. Needs medical help. I'll post it. <laughs> right, right, that seems it's to be new, what's it's happening the new way <laughs> nowadays. But to circle back on something else, right when you drove up here today, we just started talking, and then just in general friendly conversation, you know, you were kind of alluding to the fact that sometimes you think, man, should I really have gotten into music? as far as like a career and a way to like sustain a lifestyle. Do you really think about that? Or nah. is that just, do you just joke? Nah, dude, you don't have a, ch I mean, if you're doing it, especially at my age, it's not because you have a choice, you know? And that's the bit, my friend John Skibbick said, somebody interviewed him one time and was asking him, they were like, what would you advise some young person who wants to like succeed in, like what's your, how did they word it? It was like, what's the secret to succeeding you know, as a musician, and he's like, have no plan B. <laughs> you, know, like, see that. you know, like the Romans, no one could ever conquer the Romans because they just wouldn't admit they had been defeated. Yeah. You will, we won. No, you didn't? Yeah. You know, it's like, like the night yeah. on the, the night fucking of the sun shines on every inch of day. But we killed all your people. No, you haven't. <laughs> I'm still here. It's a flesh You wound. didn't win. You're right, exactly. <laughs> no well, plan B. Well, that's good to know. So I also started looking into like a lot of the bands you're in. And then there's also a spot on Facebook that says uh, bands that Dave O likes, right? And I found this interesting because neither one of the bands that I'm in do you like on Facebook. Oh. What the fuck's up with that, dude? Wait, was that my, me personally or Dave Ross? Oh, don't try guitar? to separate the two. Like you've got a team oh, yeah. fucking running your fucking it's my street team. Your pay, yeah, your street team. I mean, come on, man. I like the dirtiest players. Is it not on there? You dude? see, no, it's not on but there. But dirtiest play but see, like that page, that's that's like I, I filled out the page. I think probably before you guys existed. Oh, I don't And then I filled out some bands I like. I'm like, there, that's it. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna you we're, we're gonna have to update that. Right, because I'm in two bands. Woody's in both of them, I don't dude. Know what do you mean? Yeah, what do you, <laughs> what do you mean? As I get on my phone real what? quickly, I'm pulling up my phone. So right let's let's go down the list because I'm interested about this. Afghan wigs. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, is that who you would say is your primary employer right now, or is oh, that that's who I work? That's I mean, I go out with them every year, every year and a half. That's who I make records with. That's who. Yeah, I mean, that's my. That's my musical life. When you join the Afghan well, I'm not, Wigs. And when I'm here, it's downtime, and I do other projects or work on records with other people and do, you know, what I, it's like killing time and filler stuff. But I'm about to do this Dave record thing that I think I need to do just to have done it, you know? So who knows where that's going to go if that ends up being something that... You know, I feel like actually spending time on once I make it, like, oh, maybe somebody wants to hear these. But I don't know. The Wigs is my main gig, you know. And that whole family, Wigs, Twilight Singers, Gutter Twins. So when you join the, like, you know, coming from, I'm basically in the in the corporate world. So when you join the Afghan Wigs, is there, like, does dental and vision come along with this? Is there a, is there <laughs> no, a 401? that's on you, my friend. <laughs> is, there a four, is there a 401K? Like, what is the level of... 
uh, being involved really when work it, like that. And you know, every, probably everybody has a different arrangement as to as well. People in working bands, people in people like I mean, like if you work for Michael Jackson, you probably work and do the tour, and then when you're not on tour, they probably pay you half scale to be available. You know, yeah. or if you're in Prince's band or something like that. Wigs isn't like that. That's more. Wigs is more of a. It was an indie rock band, you know. So we have a, a voracious listenership and people that you're all are, over the globe. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, what? We, and we fill you know concert halls of a certain size all over the place. And, as far as like we played Turkey, we play Israel every year. Okay, you because you know, because Australia, I, South America. I, fo- I follow you like on a daily basis. Like you're like one of the people that I choose to be like up there in my feed. I want to know where well, Davo's I mean, at. We're not filling the Enormo Dome or whatever. Well. You know? <laughs> well, the, the Enormo Dome. Oh, man, the Sticks of Alabama. Is Spinal gonna, Tap reference. Yeah. Uh, but, the no, Sticks no, no, of I, Alabama. But, you, <laughs> but you're all over the globe. Why is it that in other countries outside of the United States, bands like the Afghan Whigs and other bands are way more popular? Why is it in Europe that you well, can... Well... That's a tough question, man. I mean, the reason anyone's popular is because somebody promoted it, you know? And then some things grow, like grassroots style. But basically, I think for a lot of people, the stuff that you listen to in high school and college age, it's when you're coming of age. And if somebody writes stuff that affects you in a moment when you're going through, a, you know, grieving or growing or being happy, or there's songs that get played at events in your life and stuff. When you're a kid, you listen to a shitload of music all the time, and you're going through things like first love, heartbreaks, you know, maybe experiencing marriages and doing crazy stuff. You're you're building all these memories that last a lifetime. And that doesn't go away. And the bands, yeah, the bands that you're into, a lot of people anyway, this is what I'm finding just through, you know, watching the people that come to our shows, and we play all these festivals too, where there's bands that are old, bands that are brand new, and you see, but you see a lot of music fans and stuff and meet them and talk to them. It's the stuff that really gets in you early is the stuff that sticks, the stuff that, 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 that you still kind of reference as your holy grail of, you know, your Desert Island albums or whatever like that. Who's I don't know what it's like now because kids, if you look on your niece or daughter's nep- or nephew's iPad, oh, it's crazy. iPod, they don't have albums. We grew up with albums. Dude, it's crazy. But now it's just you just singles, so I don't know what they're thinking of, what it's going to be like for them older when they like singles and maybe an artist, but right. not anyone. For me, like growing up, until like, I was 15, I probably had six records or something. Yeah. You know? So I know the fuck out of those records. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, that's, look I, I've, I've, I've talked about this before. Uh, because I have, I happen to be a person who does not have children, but all of my people around me are having children, sure, and yeah. some of them have reached that level where they're on Facebook. And you, you really want to get an idea of why certain things are popular and why things are being marketed towards certain age groups. Go sit down with a nine-year-old on their Instagram for about ten minutes and just watch what they do. Right. And it's, mm-hmm. it's a, nothing gets more than three seconds of sure. Sure. Right. It's like, 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 yeah. skip, like, skip, yeah, like, they've okay, grown I'm up done. with a different structure of, uh, grad, everything's instant gratification. You know, you don't have to wait for most things. And, and, and the, 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 the amount of, like we grew up wishing we could engage. Yeah. You know, like, wow, I'm looking at this magazine with my favorite, a picture of my, a photograph. Remember those of my favorite band, yeah. you know? <laughs> Wow, maybe I'll write them a letter to their management, <laughs> telling them how you know, like who? Maybe they'll get it. I don't even know. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> now it's you can. You've got some sort of you can engage. Like like if you know if you're really into whoever Madonna and and Justin she tweets Bieber. something Bieber and you, he tweets something and then you like or don't like what he says and you like quote the tweet and retweet it or you know make a comment and tag him in it. He might read it and go. Hey, fuck you, or like, or, you know, or, yeah. or, 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 or hey, thanks for that, or respond. It's like you might actually engage with someone. So, but at the same time, it's this limited, yeah, doing liking things. Yeah, there's, it's weird. I, th- I think, I think it's all still really new and socially and so culturally. There's going to be over the next five, ten years, the next generation will have more intrinsic knowledge on 
how it looks when you do certain things. Like I, I've I've had older friends have like public meltdowns online, <laughs> right. not really Isn't realizing that they're like, dude, don't doesn't dude shut up. Doesn't that guy know that? Everyone can read this, and you're posting about <laughs> Isn't that your mother-in-law being a bitch or whatever. When you know, someone whatever breaks down online, I just I get the popcorn, dude. Like I that, love well, it. I mean, duh, yeah. I know. love it. I, I can't lie. Like that's one rule I have. It's like, reality TV only. It's I mean, it's kind of pathetic though. I don't want to know about people's inner lives to that degree. Like, I, and I honestly think half the people that look like you know mooks online, like, don't really quite get. You know, I used to work in advertising and stuff a little bit. So, like, I, I get it, you know. Like, hey, man, don't, you know, every time you s- send something out into the ether, it's it's part of your brand. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I don't want my brand to be me holding my head in my hands or, you know, a photo of me covered in vomit or whatever. Because <laughs> there's so many. Well, know? I think, I heard, did I just, this is the first time, Dave, oh, you're fucking wildly popular, so we had to sell tickets to the, uh, the, the show here. We have a live studio audience. I think I just heard one of them put down an empty beer. David and I, David, uh, Davo and I need two in case you want to go up and get a couple beers, Woodrow. They're back there. Uh, we don't need do them. Feel, we just want them. How do you feel... Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, what he needs. Natty too, Light, so. baby. Sweet. <laughs> so how do you, before we move off the subject, how do you feel about Justin Bieber? Are you a fan? I don't have any feelings about Justin Bieber. <laughs> well, I feel he's probably really hardworking and he's got a lot of ability. Because I, I had to and admit on my last. good looking. On my, he is good looking. God, is he good looking. But I mean, you know. So I had to admit on my last show. He had to grow up in front of everybody. <laughs> with Jeff so Lane that you know. I've, I've become a Justin Bieber fan. Well, like, I mean, it's like, I mean, obviously he can sing, you know. Yeah. Sing and dance. And, I mean, he does, he hits all the right notes and everything's good. If you like those songs that he and his people. You think he has relatively to, reliable pitch? Like, you, you know do? what? I bet he's got really good pitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's that really was, coming. Hey, man, is she good looking? Yeah. Well, that, she's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually one of the things. No, but I, is she hot? Well, she's. She's really funny. <laughs> is he a good singer? Well, he's got really good pitch. This motherfucker's got good pitch. Actually, that I, I didn't get to it. But, when but does he have good catch? I knew it. Oh, yes, he does. I was going to ask you if you thought having great pitch ever helped you write a great song, but I know no, that's No, but that's it gets me the... laid like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> so speaking of getting laid, I'm glad you segued into that because as I'm digging around, like I'm like, I want to dig around and find out where davo has been. I fucking get on YouTube, and all you got to do is type in your name. And one of the first three <laughs> things that comes up is Dave Rosser performing with Usher. <laughs> so please explain. I watched the video like three or four times. How does this, where is this? And just to set the scene for everybody, basically, I think this is the Afghan wigs plan. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was 2012. So, yeah, 2012. The video was. No, wait, a, or wait, wait, when was it? The video came out 2013. It was 2000, so it's. It was, it, was 2000, it, was, it was at South by Southwest of 2013. So y'all are playing. It looks like y'all played two or three songs. And then all of a sudden, Usher comes out. Yeah. And y'all do a couple of songs with Usher. Yeah, we were, we were going to do one of his songs. Like, we were Greg was talking about Greg like you know he likes covering oddball stuff that people yeah. wouldn't think he would cover so he was talking about covering climax which in the original key is like really hard to sing <laughs> you know and Usher sing he sings really quiet and he's, he gets yeah. in like super high voice the guy's like killer singer so we were kicking around and I think it was Andy Cohn from Fader magazine Got in touch with he's pals with Greg. Got in touch and and like was talking. I don't know how it got started, but they were talking about like who would you like to do a gig? And Greg's like Usher, and he's like I know Usher. <laughs> <laughs> or you know I, I wasn't there for it, but somehow yeah. he facilitated the two camps talking, and I guess Usher like did some googling and realized like, oh, that okay, these dudes they got are a couple legit. songs I dig, you know. So yeah, we went to Austin for to do. We were doing the fader for it. It was like a Converse sponsored big uh, tent that there are, you know, it's like they erect a Quonset hut and put a PA in it and stuff. And, <laughs> um, I think and we, we showed up and did, we one. did rehearse for a couple days and hung out with him and his, 
Oh, so you got to cool. hang with this cat? A little bit, yeah. Dude, man. Like Davo, like we had, but let's just not brush he by. He showed this. up with a bass. We we're like, what are you gonna do with that? He's like, I played bass. I'm like, oh shit. Uh, you know, uh, you just you meet somebody, you just assume they're like, you know. Usher is a dance, fucking no, like he's a real good global megastar. Yeah. Like he this, is a jewelry wrangler, dude. What? Like, you know, he's got like a horse assi- assistants, and he brought his musical director, Johnny Natural, who's killer guitar player, beautiful. You think dude, he was born good, with that name? Johnny no. Natural. Well, yeah, the Natural family. <laughs> the Natural family. And, you know, his dad. They made that baseball movie. His dad's it's Mr. Natural, man. Keep on trucking. <laughs> anyway, that's for all you old people. Yeah, um, that's okay. But but there was somebody. I'm sure it was just an assistant. But a couple times I saw him like carrying a box and like he, you know, go away. We'd take a break for lunch. He'd come back, different necklace. No shit. And good stuff too. Huh. He's got nice. He's got nice. That- I, He's got nice ice. I saw, I saw that, and I was like, because I'm a huge Usher fan. Mm-hmm. Like, I really am. Like, I own his records. I went and saw him play at... Uh, He's about as huge as you can get. Right? I mean, really, so, you know. that's why, when I saw that, do you, are there any additional nerves, or do you do, like, extra, extra preparation, knowing that a dude like Usher's going to get up there, or are you just, like, a robot? Like, it's just, you just, nah. it doesn't matter who's up there. No, dude, I mean, just... You'd be ready for anything. Be prepared and just be ready for stuff because we got Bieber, up there. Be prepared. Yeah, we got up there and we like we we worked up that shit for two days and then we got on stage and everything was totally. Oh, he's doing that. Oh, okay, whatever. You know, I mean, they're four chord songs. We're not writing, you know, the Rite of Spring. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what. You know I, went, what I, mean? I went and saw him at Essence Korsakoff. Fest this year, <laughs> and that dude's band was just fucking insane. Oh, Their the, drummer, his drummer, was yeah, like, was, you don't get you don't get that gig without stepping on. Five other dudes trying to get that gig, you know, like that's. And what's weird is the New Orleans thing, man. Like every time we go see a band like that, that's like a bunch of, you know, big dick hot shots or whatever. Like, wow, well, I know like six guys that could have that gig, <laughs> you know, like really the the quality the, the the caliber of drummers in New Orleans is like, that like white dudes that, that you know can what? swing. You let's, know what I mean? Let's talk about that because it's, we take it for granted, but we all know, like. Enough dude, enough people, enough good players to give Prince a band for, you know, a whole different band every week of the year. It's crazy, man. It's funny you say that because I don't really know anything about that. I know that I've been lucky to be around some... Well, tell you this, move to like... Elkhart, Indiana, for a month and go to clubs and try to find or a wherever you're Sheboygan, yeah. Wisconsin, or wherever the fuck, you know. Because I don't, because I am, I'm one of those people, Dave. And go that, see like, cover bands or bands, you know, just playing in local places, Lincoln, Nebraska, anywhere else. And there'll be some good players. But here, consistently, you find dudes that are like way good, who like have that thing, you know, the little, the it factor, the and mojo. And they're playing and, LL Cool J covers yeah, or something. Yeah, or like, like yeah, that. dudes that play tuba yeah, playing no. LL Cool J covers, you know, like, what? Yeah. New yeah. Orleans is just bizarre. Louisiana it, in general, but New Orleans in particular. I, and you think it's still that way, or is that is that sure, shit going to go away? I think it's people grow up with parents that play and like to hang out and play for fun. But then you're like Lafayette, for example. The town is like it's all like a suburb of nowhere. You know, it's like a suburb. Yeah. But there's no big city attached to what's it? Is it seventy thousand or something? I don't know. There's a I lot of know. hot chicks but, in Lafayette, but. Though. Dude, there's so much like guitar, specifically guitar, but also all the Cajun and Zydeco stuff. But there's so much talent there. Like, where does it come from and why? Like, I came from a town that's the same type of town, Kyan only somewhere Pepper. else, and they didn't have anything. Yeah, you know, because that was funny. Louisiana, I talked to, man, it's just bizarre. I talked to, I talked to you, you and I both know Chad Gilmore. Uh, mm-hmm. He was, he's been on this show before, and I'm one of those guys that, like, if you're in my circle and you're my friend, and I think you have talent, like, I'll, I'll be the guy who says, you know just what, one you're more the, thing to make fun of. You're the, yeah, you're the <laughs> best. I, I think you're the best. And I, I was talking to Chad about him because I think he's super fucking talented, and he was the first one to say, he's like, nah, dude, there's a dozen dudes in this town that, off the top of my head, yeah, Chad, could replace he me. shit. Yeah, she, yeah, he is a little bit of a and bitch, that guy man. And sucks. Pretty, hot wife. Like, I hate people with perfect <laughs> lives. I really do. I, I can't stand them. Uh, it, it, it just kind of, it just kind of gets on my nerves. Was Usher the biggest, most famous dude that you've ever a been in a room with or performed with? Well, probably performed with, I guess. Willie Nelson played with Willie Nelson once. Doing, doing what? In the last thirty seconds. Of the Dukes of Hazard movie, Uncle Jesse's having a hoedown or whatever. Like the Jessica that, Simpson. Yeah. Nice. That that <clears throat> movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
and uh, we had to learn, we had to learn three songs, and then like actually perform them with him. But then, of course, it was like all of the music was lip synced, so we had to play the tracks. But we actually had to learn the tracks. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you think Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson's in the same bigger room than with Usher. all kinds of people, Bono. Because Willie Nelson is not bigger than Usher, uh, right? Well, that's hard to say. But yeah, it's hard to say because I mean, youth rules everything, right? In a way, but I know a lot of young people like Willie Nelson, young Americans, and like really hip Europeans. So I you, mean, he's it's cool to like Willie Nelson. You know what I mean? It's not like it's like it's not like Lawrence Welk or something. Just because he's old, it's like I like very it, few kids like Paul Anka or Andy Williams. I think you know they like I, mean? I think they like Willie Nelson because he's 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 he's, he, he's got his middle finger out all the time, dude. Because he's a, he'll he's just, a real OG. He'll just smoke dope <laughs> wherever the fuck he wants. But what are and, they gonna do to him? Nothing. Right. He ain't hurting anyone. Uh, so, he just wrote like you know a hundred of the most still in use classic songs ever written in the American songbook. So before Jeez, we, we move on from that, like have, like who, who else pops out in your head uh, as far as somebody's record you've been on or somebody like a, a, just a famous dude that when you were in the room with them, like he, you had to kind of pump your brakes because you were like, man, this is a big deal. I'm around X. I don't get like that though. It's about music, dude. My allegiance is to music. And if I'm living up to the standard of, what I think, I mean, some people, you got to do stuff because they're asking you to bring it, but also maybe they've got a particular personality type or something that where, you know, like everybody interprets music and how to make it in different ways. Yeah. So some people have a different template and then some people are like real technically adept. So shit like that isn't about being intimidated by someone unless it's someone like, like if I'm sure if I was doing a track with Prince, you'd be expecting him to rehearse the crap out of you and then stop the tape. Start over, do it again, like do a million takes, trying like striving for perfection or excellence yeah. or something. But most people I'm working with, they're not striving for, for the kind of like physical, uh, technical, mathematical perfection. They're more trying to get the right feel, and that's personality type stuff. And it's like yeah. I wouldn't be in the room if I wasn't right for the gig. Well, well, and most of the time that's true. Very people, I mean, people don't just hire you sight unseen because. Like, I showed him a degree or a certification saying I play guitar. You don't choose people like that. It's about the personality. I mean, look at like Neil Young and Crazy Horse, right? Uh -huh. Neil Young can afford or have and or have made available to him the most finest musicians in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> bring me With, the finest meats and me cheeses the in all the land. Science, and make sure he brings a brake caliper and some stuff to calibrate, <laughs> to measure like millionths of an inch or whatever, you know. <laughs> And, and and Crazy Horse is like a punk rock band. Yeah. They're awesome, but you can't say they're good the way Michael Jackson's band is good, you know? Yeah. So for you... Like, so it's all about being right for the thing. Being intimidated. I'd be intimidated if I didn't feel prepared, yeah. you know? But, I mean, I, I think I, I developed... I tried to develop the ability to think on my feet, you know, in so, musical situations. So for you, who who is it? Just one. I, don't, I just need to know one. Like, oh, who know. is it? No, no, no. Who is it now that nobody, maybe nobody you've ever met, but to, that's somebody that, that, that gets you off, that if you heard they were going to be playing at blah, blah, blah in New Orleans uh, two weeks from now, who's the artist that there is no, you for sure, you will oh, be Oh, like there. who do I, yeah, who, who. Who's, mm. who's the one that if they come around, Devo is for Living sure. Living or dead, you mean? Uh, fuck it, yeah. Living or dead. Fuck it. H who? Who's let's, the? Who? Let's look at let's look at Spotify and just see what I've been looking at mostly. Oh, this phone pisses me off. <laughs> it's a it's fucking jam packed with ideas. That's why I can't find Spotify right now. This clamshell LG phone. <laughs> Davo still has a flip phone. Spotify really sucks. It comes across as Braille. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, while, while you're looking like that, I think we're where are we at, George? About fifty minutes in. Okay, we're about fit. We still got some oh, time. Sweet, you know I'll, I'll, Terry Callier, man. Terry Terry Callier was he died a couple years back. Amazing singer. He was somewhere between. He was like somewhere between Richie Havens and Nina Simone. He was like a. They didn't know how to categorize him, you know, because he was jazzy, but he was like folk music, 
and some of his but some of his stuff was like socially conscious stuff but he sang a lot about getting it on yeah and just a really terry c-a-l-l-i-e-r i just wrote terry. it down so he, he did some stuff with massive attack okay so you he play sang with them so but like just a badass singer but you could tell he was probably a really heavy human being you know so too. that's okay so that's that's the guy jonas what, police next? woman she's great joan wasser compare terry callier to a guy that you play with to Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> well, no, let's see. Mark Broussard. Because you are, oh. a, you're basically a part of Mark you know Broussard. What? This guy, yeah. Terry Callier, I talk about Broussard all the time. I think just personally that he's one of these once in a lifetime vocal cats that. Oh, he's a real you, voice, man. Mark's right? How do you. Badass. So you, you're a guy on the inside with him, right? You, it's you play a joy with him playing live. with him, man, because he's. He's got that musicality. I don't even know why he has other guitar players. Like, I guess he doesn't practice soloing or something, but, like, Marx does deep, dense shit, you know? Hey, do you think that's what's kept him from, from really reaching that next level? Yeah, not enough shredding solos. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> no. Mark, What man. I'm saying is, do you think <laughs> that because I'm hoping on April 26th that... Uh, that well, what do you... I mean, Mark's who's to say... I mean, we Mark's kept agreed to what? sit know. down and talk to me on this show. Is What I'm saying is, is do you think the fact that he is that real of an artist and really writing about things that maybe other people don't want him to write about, that's what's actually held him down from going to that next level I don't of think, superstardom? Well, I mean... It's you're sort of speaking as if superstardom is some sort of inevitability if you just suck the right dick or something like that. And it's for a guy not, like Broussard, I think. But, it but can I be. mean, it could be for anyone. Look at I mean, dude, look at I'm trying to think of something unlikely that worked. Weird Al Yankovic, you know? I mean, what some? Yeah. You know, what's the answer? Is whichever way the winds of change blow, in combined with. The core, whatever it's talked about in the corporate hallways, in combined with how long can you, how long do you feel like eating bologna sandwiches while you just play all the time and stay on the road? I mean, that dude's got a family. I'd say he has a really nice life. And through playing with him, people flip the fuck out. And no one, they do. I mean, it's just how much of your, how much of your personal time, in addition to working, are you willing to, like, how much are you willing to alienate your family to be quote unquote successful? What does that mean? I mean, he's rich enough. To you know, live a good life. I mean, what do you need? I guess it's kind of like you go into the casino, and what you should really be asking yourself is, how much do I need to win to go? Okay, I'm done. You know, because yeah. you could stay there and lose and lose and lose. If you can afford to keep losing, stay there for days and days. But you know, but if you like, you know, if I make a hundred percent of my money, then you're a success. You won. Then you're a winner. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. matter if some people can afford to lose for three years and then win. You know, a billion dollars or something, but the career wise, I'd say he's sitting pretty. Yeah. And I, he's not kissing anyone else's butt and he writes all the stuff he wants to write. You know, he write he makes the music he wants to listen to, which is that's a win win as opposed to like like if somebody wins the voice, you or 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 one of those shows like that, what you're instantly bound to some contract with a bunch of people telling you how they're going to make your image and what kind of stuff you're probably going to sing. Maybe you get to write a little bit or co-write. You know, like you don't have any control over anything. That dude, he went through the label system, went through album cycles, went through probably the same thing that happens. Every one of my friends has had some sort of thing happen where they get signed and then their A&R guy gets fired and then suddenly you've lost your godfather and your sympathetic ear at the label. Then the label gets sold and the next thing you know, you're like, oh, wait, why did I start doing this? You know, like, <laughs> he's a great I, example of success yeah. story in that he went through the majors and got kicked around and then became, you know, probably had God knows how many troubles he had with different shit like that. I didn't know him back then that well. I wasn't working with him. And I don't want to talk about someone else's business or, or career like that. But I would say the dude's got it, got his shit dialed in pretty good because he gets to go out and tour like everybody in that band is like pals. Yeah. It's not. Like, it doesn't feel like, you know, the employer in his own private jet. How do you feel about band, Like, it's badass. And how, the music on stage is just pure fun, you it, know? It, it really is. How, how do you feel about being this hired gun type? Well, at this point, I'm not. P. 
people work with me because they like I'm doing something they like. I'm not just get guitar player A to fill in slot B. Yeah, I've got an identifiable thing, and if you know, I'm not right for everything. I, I don't try to just go for any job. Well, dude, you know, I, I, that's why I'm making this record. This just popped into my head, and I don't know why I did, but I saw a video of you. I don't know how long ago it was, but it was something I really wanted to see. I fit like, in, correct me if I'm wrong. I could say all the wrong names right now. I'm pretty sure it was you, Stanton Moore, Pepper Keenan, yeah, maybe in a room playing Ace of Spades. Yeah, we dude, do that every year. Dude, this shit was fucking. All I saw was a rehearsal video, and it slayed. And I never saw anything about it. And again. Rob Mercurio was on bass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What the fuck was that? Like I wanted to. That's a Megalomaniac's it. Ball, which they're doing this year, although without me. But it's a, it's <laughs> it's usually like Mike Dillon is involved in this thing, and sometimes uh, they'll get like uh, Marco Benevento to play at it and stuff. It's during Jazz Fest. Okay. One night of the thing, I think this year a bunch of the dudes from Ween are going to be there. Dave Drewitz really? and yeah, Mickey. Um, the they do this thing called the Megalomaniacs Ball, and the, and last year we did it. HR from Bad Brains sang. Norwood Fisher from Fishbone was playing bass on a bunch of stuff. Eric McFadden, who's a shredder extraordinaire, he's don't worry, be he's happy. like he's a killer guitar player that I don't even know if he's in a band. He plays with he plays with Anders a lot, but he's one of these guys that's always doing something somewhere, always on a stage. Like everybody in that band was like. Like it was like somebody's dream band, you know. And we played, and but we played shit like the Stooges and the Ramones, and you know that that stuff, good punk, old punk stuff, Bad Brains. We played Circle, not Circle Jerks. Um, what are they called? Black Flag. And they do that every year. I don't know what when it is this year. It's usually like probably the the first Friday, maybe or something. But you know, at a club like all I know is that shit was sick, and I didn't even know that's you killer had pepper's that. real deal, man. I didn't even know you had that in you. I had never seen you play shredding ass, dude. Fucking... I was fifteen in the eighties, you know. <laughs> Everybody started like that, dad. <laughs> yeah, fucking sticks of Alabama, fucking bringing it, son. <laughs> the sticks of Alabama. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Dave. We uh, I think we're right at about an hour. I like to keep it at that. I'm I'm really like thankful that you came and sat down with me Dude, thanks for having um, me man just to have a conversation um it's weird I, talking about the old days and the yeah the band and, houses with 30 people staying in them <laughs> right, five but, people in the band and 30 dude, buddies it was wouldn't great. you fucking wouldn't you go do that right now oh if you God. could right At we, this should, do age, that. we me, should do that i have been saying that the rent fucking, a condo on panama city beach and just bring a fucking band down and, there. and wear what we were wearing in 1996 <laughs> Some, some nice that that OP, would be awesome. Some, some OP baggy board shorts and crazy pants. So what, what's uh <laughs> so what's what's on the uh, what's on the agenda for fucking Davo for the next six months? What you got coming up, man? What you want to talk? Yeah, about? working on some records with some people. Working on a Wigs record. We're gonna do my thing. I don't know if I'm gonna do with it. Uh, so when you say solo record, you mean a record like that you are gonna like sing? Dave Rosser record, man. I've like I've 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 been recording music and sketches, and I've got like a million things. I just never, I always get in my own way and never finish it. And I think it takes a lot of balls to put something out and go, here, there it is, that's me. But I'm, I need to do it. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, like what? just to, just to do it. Like, like, here's my, here's my profile photo, only it's a record. You that's know? a symptom that, like, I find to be strange. What, like perfectionism People, or something? Or? Yeah. A, a little get bit in their own way. Well, you got to quit giving a crap, I think, and that's well, I'm, for, I'm to the point of I just don't care about anything anymore. Yeah, but it's I, I've had this conversation that you with, with what we're talking about right now with every one of my friends who is a really awesome musician, and of course me coming you from have what a high I did, standard. That's I why jump, you're awesome or whatever. So then, right? when you want to put something out, you you're trying to apply this unreasonable standard to it and what you need. Yeah, are friends in life. That can you rely on your friends to check you, yeah, and to pull you back from the abyss, and or to go, yes, come on, man, man, get over it, just do it, you know, yeah, like and you, so hey, finally, Dave, my friends I, have been. I've in, heard you forever, and this is good. Put that fucking shit out there, and yeah. I think y'all need a little well, I'm bit. I'm not of, trying to change in the world or anything. I just need to, just need to do it. You know? Yeah, y'all are, you know, and it's I say y'all, but and it's I just like talented people around me that I see. I'm like, man, people would love to see this that you're doing. They would love to put it out, and y'all are all the same. You're like, oh, I don't know, it's not perfect enough. And I, I mean, part of me appreciates that, but the other part just wants to say, man, people want to hear a product, right? 
Dave Dave on guitar as a product, and we want to hear that shit. We want to hear that. We want to hear. We want to hear the country album by AC Ductwork. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, next time you're thinking about whether or not you should put something out, let me come over, listen to it for two seconds, and go fuck yeah, put it out, and then it'll be a done deal. I'm gonna. I got to do three (laughs) albums. I got to do the Dave Rossner album. Then I've got an electronica project called Lord of the Files. <laughs> that's going to be all dance music. <laughs> That'll be good. Is the is the Lord of the File? I just thought about this. And then there's is, a metal instrumental metal project called Don't Shred on Me. <laughs> is the Lord of the Files thing like uh, it, it has a dyslexic uh, lead singer? That's like, gonna, that's that would right. be it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Strange it's, glove. It's, it's not even a, it's not even a play on words. It's just the guy just fucking wrote it down wrong. Yeah. Actually, I did. I did a, a sort of. Uh, it was, it was loop based uh, improv record called Vader Youth with Eric Bolivar, <laughs> the drummers. He and I, everything was live, and then I went back in afterwards and like played bass over it or something. Like we did it at my house, and it's on. I think it's on Bandcamp or it's called Vader Youth. And nice. there's a lot of. A, it's a lot of just. It's just weird. Oh, I unlistenable saw it. shit. If look, anybody who <laughs> goes if you out, like the unlistenable like eight minute songs. Yeah, David Rosser. D A V uh, uh, I D R O S S E R. Go With out the there and Q. go uh, go out there and just Google them. And there's fucking a dozen bands and send projects. money. Yeah, send money quickly because we're gonna be back in the sticks of Alabama. Well, this is cool, man. Yeah, and the the last thing I want to say is is I like to have a few soda pops every night, Davo. And I have this notebook, so Wait, I don't. Where are you fre- from? I'm from here, from New Orleans. You said soda pop. Yeah. I just have really a lot of awesome friends, and we, you know, like to speak differently. But I like to have a couple of fucking soda Papinskis at night, and I always like. write everything down. And the last thing I wrote last night before I went to sleep was, and this is after a few beers, and who knows what else? Davo invented the Canadian tuxedo. So <laughs> I don't know if you know what the Canadian tuxedo is, but the you're Texas, wearing one right now. Texas tuxedo. <laughs> Davo's known for war- wearing the denim on the bottom and on the top. So if you see a man walking down the street with and by uh, that I mean the, Can- <laughs> the, the Canadian most uncomfortable tuxedo condom, holler at him. Well, Davo, I love you, man. Thank you for sitting down, dude. And uh, until next time, Good this time. is Wine and Cheese. We'll talk to you then. All right. You think I'm afraid of you? I've crushed an airplane, been hit by lightning, hit by sledgehammers. I don't want you back.
Invisible, transient, a fist full of ambient Can we win? Good night, I'm right, it's so pedestrian Water soluble and diabolical Maniacal, maniacal, I'm all around reliable And automatic, emphatic, addict, full of static, static No commercial rehearsal, I flip it forward, reversal Dance, kneel, jump around, slide your body in the sound Down, down, everybody in the ground, everybody We like